Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce Small Business Technical Assistance Workshop in partnership with uh, the Business Navigator Program. Uh, we look forward to having you. Matthew? I think we did. Oh, there he is. Oh, there you are. <laughs> All right. Good morning, everyone. I apologize. I had a quick little slip up when it comes to our um, presentation today workshop. Well, I thank you very much for joining us today for the Miami Dade Chamber of Commerce uh, Technical Assistance Workshop. Uh, we are going to get started at exactly 10.05 while we let our uh, participants come on in. For those that are watching, we are live on Facebook. Uh, we encourage you to share um, and be a part of this amazing opportunity to learn how to market to your ideal clients. Uh, we've been doing these technical assistance workshops, these series on the ABCs of business to help our uh, community and our clients understand the basics of business, how to get started, how to handle your books and your finances, how to make sure you have your operations in place, how to get government contracting. Um, and today we're talking about marketing to your ideal clients. So I want to thank all those that are joining us um, on Zoom. If you're on Facebook, make sure you share this link. You can click the link to join in so you can be a part of the conversation. And I want to welcome those that are here on Zoom. Feel free to put your information in the chat. Say hello, say good morning. Let us know that you are here um, in all these spaces, whether we are, are online or in person, you want to make sure people know who you are. So make sure you put your business in the chat. Um, you never know who you're going to have here on this uh, chat that may be a potential client. So make sure you share your business resource. Um, and we encourage that at the Miami Dade Chamber of Commerce. So come on in, join, and we will get started in a few moments. Someone said our chat is a disabled. All right, we are going to work on that right now and ensure you can say hello to everyone. Those that are on Facebook, make sure you share this. I am going to make a co host. One co host can figure out the chat part and we can get that together. All right, so it is now 10.05. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce Small Business Technical Assistance Workshop. Uh, we do this in conjunction with the SBA's Community Navigator Program. This is a partnership um, that we have um, had with um, the SBA Community Navigator Program since last year. 
um, is funded by the SBA along with a few other organizations like Career Sources South Florida, um, Miami Dade County, to provide free expert technical assistance to you, our business owners, and our business community. Uh, this this iteration of our small business technical assistance series was funded um, through the American Rescue Plan Act. They gave over a hundred million dollars across the nation to to create these navigator programs to bring together organizations such as Cindas, FIU SBDC Center, Prospera, and a few others, so that we can provide small business technical assistance to minority, women-owned, veteran, and LGBTQ businesses throughout South Florida. And we look forward to having you here today, and I want to take a moment to provide our president and CEO, um, Eric Knowles, to bring greetings to you on behalf of the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce. Well, good morning. Um, I just want to thank you all for joining us. Uh, see, we got quite a few people coming on. And I want to thank our partners at um, Small Business uh, the Navigator Program. Um, it's so important. I always talk about the fact that not having the back of your house together is a big impediment to you doing business. You may be great at what you do. You, as I say, you may be a great landscaper. You may be a great chef. You may be a great um, uh, accountant. And even accountants have to have their back. They're doing everybody else's books, but they got to have theirs together. So having your business programs, your, your as I say, back of the house, the easiest way to say it, you know, having a marketing team, having an accountant, having the right legal setup, all those things are important. Again, you could be great at what you do. But your business is not going to survive if you don't have those things. A lot of businesses did not uh, have access to PPP and EIDL because they did not have those things in order. So first and foremost, get the back of your house to go and together and, and in order. So thank you for coming today. Hope you enjoy today's program. And if you're not a member of the chamber, please consider becoming a member of the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, President Knowles. We really appreciate that. Um, and as I said, we are here to get this back of the house in order. And today I have the honor of presenting to you um, two amazing speakers uh, that are members of the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce and are here to ensure that you have the best information when it comes to understanding how to market to your ideal clients. So first, I want to present our um, first presenter, William Lucky, uh, co-founder of Dynamic Strategic Marketing. And he's going to lead us up with understanding what it means to market to your ideal client. So Mr. Lucky, you want to um, join us? Hello, good morning. Good morning, good morning. I don't, I don't have any technical difficulties this morning. All right, you have the floor, thank you. Okay, uh, good morning everybody. I'm here this morning to give you some information on some of the processes that you should use to find who your ideal customer may be. Matthew, do you have control of the PowerPoint? Yes, you can share your screen. Can you guys see it? Everybody seeing it? Not yet. There we go. Am I full screen? Not yet. Okay, I'm having some difficulty. I have a freeze here. And just to let people know, Mr. Lucky, if they see that horizontal bar between you and your presentation, they can click on that bar and move it to the right, and that will increase your presentation. 
I am frozen this morning. Oh, no. Matthew, can you control it from your end? All right, we will uh, do that. Gina, do you um... I, Because it's, I, I'm, I, yeah, I'm totally frozen. Give me a second here. All right. So uh, let me come back online. All right, so we will handle these technical difficulties very quickly. Give us one moment. We can't see your screen right now, Mr. Lucky. Oh yeah, yeah. All you have to do is go up to the top and click the um, slideshow and press start slideshow. Yeah, it told me I had to reboot my. I will get the PowerPoint ready on our side. Um, I apologize for that. We do have a copy. And our chat is on. So I'm glad to see people in the chat. We have representative from Congress. Congressional District Representative Salazar on the line, and they also have small business resources. So make sure you check out the chat. Welcome Valerie of VP, VLP, VLB Pearl, a Virtual Administrative uh, Management Services and Assistant. It's good to see you and Carr from Good More of the Healthcare, in term healthcare, private duty home. Healthcare agency. And as we get um, Mr. Lucky, we will come back to you. Yeah, I appreciate Go it. Go ahead, Chris. Um, you want to, um, Chris, let's bring up um, our other presenter, um, Chris, CEO of On the Map Marketing. How are you doing, Chris? Hey, doing great, doing great. Thank you, Matt. You? That is good to hear, man. I know you're going to narrow down this presentation. So we're gonna, I know uh, uh, Mr. Lucky is setting the scene, but we're gonna deal with those technical difficulties. But go ahead if you wanna start us off um, and talk to us about using the power of search engines um, to find your ideal client. Thank you and welcome, Chris. Thank you, Matthew. Yes, uh, search engine marketing is in a, exciting space. I've been in it for now a little over seven years. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting to utilize different digital marketing uh, tools that are out there to us. You know, we there's a plethora of them. So uh, my uh, presentation today will be mainly on how we can utilize search engines to find your ideal customers. So Mr. Lucky will talk more about, you know, identifying your ideal customer profile, which I think is extremely important aspect in any business where you know, you're starting to build or you already have one. Uh, my presentation today is more on giving you guys some act actionable insights on how can you utilize search engines and what are the things you should be looking at to identify what is your ideal customer doing. So today's agenda is, I'll give you guys a little additional kind of intro about myself. Uh, we'll talk about understanding buyer's journey. How, what are the buyer's journeys? What are they doing you know, within their like, buying journey? Um, we're going to understand how search engine result page features operate and work. So there's a lot of nuances on what we see in search engine result pages. So I want to talk about that and kind of identify main points to look at when you're thinking about your ideal customer profile and how can you reach them. And then last points are, can you reach your ideal customer profile through search engines? Because sometimes customers don't know they need your service and we're gonna talk about how search engines are ideal to reach the people that have made a decision that they need your service. We're gonna talk about two methods that you can use in search engine marketing, which one is pay-per-click and one is, one is SEO, which is search engine optimization. 
And then I want to give you guys some uh, actionable tips on how to get started with SEO and uh, a couple of free tools you can use to play around and get some initial insights on uh, SEO. So, um, all right, well, I'll just get started. So quick intro on, oh, sorry. So quick intro on myself. I uh, got into tech and digital marketing 11 years ago, started a small uh, web design uh, company. Uh, and then kind of my path uh, got me into a company called On The Map Marketing. I joined them seven years ago as a website project manager. And you know, in that time frame, I was able to kind of work my way up to become a CEO. This year, I became a CEO of On The Map. And uh, we've been on a pretty aggressive, not aggressive, very healthy, but good uh, growth path. Uh, since 2019, we have almost doubled our revenue. This year, we're on track to do six million, and our goal is to be at 20, uh, by 10 million in 2025. So I'm excited to you know, share some of those insights we've had, uh, kind of some of the successes. And you know, I have to say, it's a lot related to search engine marketing and things we've been doing. So uh, we've been pretty successful with our campaigns. So I think the knowledge I can share with you guys is coming not just from uh, textbooks, but really from real life scenarios. Um, some of the niches we work with is uh, law firms. We've worked with a lot of law firms, specifically personal injury, contracting uh, space, uh, roofers, plumbers, those type of you know uh, services that need a lot of the lead generation. Real estate, e-commerce, and also some uh, software as a service uh, tools as well. And uh, we have huge aspirations to become one of the leading uh, internet marketing agencies uh, in US. And we're here, homegrown, Miami, Florida. Uh, we constantly do internship programs. We have a big, uh, relatively solid size office in Miami downtown. So it's exciting to be able to participate in this group particularly because I want On The Map's name to be known in, you know, in, the, in the whole Miami spectrum. And I want you guys to think of us as uh, someone that can be a resource you know, whenever you are getting ready to uh, jump into search engine marketing. So that's just a quick intro. So I want you guys to have a bit of a context. Why am I talking about search engine marketing? And uh, you know, why is, actually, I'm really passionate about SEO. So you guys will hear me get excited about certain things. So let me get, oh, sorry. I want to make sure I'm on the right slide. That wasn't the right one. There. So let's start with understanding the buyer's journey. Um, so the way we like to think of it, there's three segments of buyer's journeys, right? So one is, are they aware of the fact that they need some form of service? You know, are people thinking about it or they're not? But it just awareness is the number one element of someone getting the knowledge that they need something. Now, how do people reach them? It's social media, TV, radio. I think TV is the most evident one with TV ads, just constantly serving new products for us that we're like, oh yeah, I should go to Denny's, or oh yes, I should buy this uh, product that you really didn't think you needed, but until that awareness was brought to you, that's when you decided like, oh yeah, I actually need it. Then consideration, which is uh, when people are doing research or maybe I should look into this, or maybe they're trying to get some additional information on certain products they're thinking about buying. And usually people are finding that through social media and search engines. And then the last one is that decision moment when people have decided I need this service or I wanna buy this, where do they turn? Very often people turn to search engines to find that service they have decided they need to buy. So that's where I want to focus on and what we're going to be talking about today is how to reach these people that have made a decision that they need to buy your product that you're offering and how can you, you can use search engines to find them and target them and what are the methods how you can reach those visitors uh, you know, that can, come, that can become your uh, new customers. So first, I want to share a couple uh, astonishing facts about search engines itself. So 53% of US consumers say that, research, that they research products using a search engine before they decided whether they're going to buy it or not. So that talks on this consideration fact. People are doing a lot of research doing search engines. Google organic search is responsible for 60% of the world uh, world's internet traffic. So 60% of the internet is happening on Google. So we're going to be talking about search engines. There are a lot of different search engines, but 
the primary one is Google. So all the information I'll be giving you today is strictly around Google and how you can utilize Google to target your ideal customer profile. Uh, another astonishing fact, there's 7 billion searches per day. And this is 2020 data, so probably a lot more even now. But just think about the amount of searches that are happening every hour, every moment. So the chances are people are searching uh, the product you're offering. And that's what we're going to be talking about a lot today of how to identify, are people searching your product? What are the numbers, search volumes? That's going to be a, a term I want you to learn today, search volume. But as we'll jump into that in the next slides. And then another two kind of interesting facts. One, uh, this one is targeting more uh, local business owners, right? So after searching on a smartphone for something nearby, and that could be barber near me or a coffee shop near me, 76% of people ended up visiting that business within one day. We're talking about a really high, what we would call conversion rate, just for those type of search terms, which means Google can drive your ideal customer to your business if you are a local business. So you know that that's kind of thing we, we're going to talk about in the next couple uh, slides. And then uh, last point I want to mention: 56% of online consumers in the U.S. had searched for local business via a mobile browsers. So again, if you're a local business owner search engine is your best friend because people are searching for businesses around them they're looking for a local establishment that they can go to and perform that activity they're looking for because they made a decision that they need it they type in a search hey service near me and they make a decision to go see you and that's a business that you're you just new customer that you just attracted so i think i have built a case that uh we need search engine optimization or search engine marketing. So how can we utilize it and how can we start playing around with some of that information? So first, I wanted to kind of talk about just the search engine result page features because I think everyone here can relate to that, that no matter what keyword you put in, like Google seems to serve different types of results almost every time you put it in. So let's talk about you know, those most common type of categories of searches. So the first one here on the left is an example of what happens when someone types in car accident lawyer Miami. We work with a lot of attorneys, so it's very common kind of element where we feel comfortable in and we have a lot of information. So what are we seeing here when someone searches for car accident lawyer Miami? So if you're an attorney or similar type of business, Google gives you several options how you can present yourself. One, I want to caution you that some of these keywords are extremely competitive because there's huge companies going after them. So we have to be creative around what kind of keywords you're targeting. Uh, and there's a lots of forms how we can do the research, and I'll show you how to do that. But let's just talk about the features itself. So number one, Google is serving something called Google screened ads. So if you're a plumber, roofer, realtor, you can utilize these by paying directly to Google to show you here in these top web property. And once someone clicks on it, it shows your information and people end up uh, calling you potentially if you have good reviews and things of that sort. Then next section is Google AdWords. And it's also known as PPC, pay-per-click. And we'll talk about it. But if you type in car accident lawyer Miami, first you have two blocks of ads and then you have the map results. Remember, we we're talking about the near me keywords. It's these are the ones where Google is serving it. So this is a kind of pretty standard SERP feature breakdown for car accident lawyer Miami keyword. Now let's say we typed in Hotel Miami, we get totally different uh, result view. Why? Because Google is constantly improving its algorithm to serve you information that's going to be highly relevant to the to the searcher's intent. So if I'm looking for a hotel in Miami, Google gives me the ads because that's where they make their money. And then it shows us this dynamic search result with actually hotels and uh, prices on those hotels. There's actually a big controversy some time ago that Google is starting to take this traffic and they're serving the results themselves and people are not even clicking on websites anymore. So this is a SERP feature for hotels. But then if you're an e-commerce store, 
A couple of things I want you to be aware of. So first one, similar how we had uh, Google screen ads here. If you are, let's say you type in basketball shoes, Google's gonna serve you first what's called product ads. So this is directly connected to your e-commerce store and a feed is distributing these ads out to Google's search engine result pages. Then you have the regular ads and only then you have the actual organic results. And we're gonna talk more about this, how to differentiate between the two and which ones you should focus on. But basically, we're seeing three completely different search engine results. So the takeaway here is when you're starting to think about your ideal customer profile, you'll have to get familiarized with what are these results that Google is serving when your ideal customers are searching for any type of service you might be offering. So let's talk a little bit about how can we identify these keywords. Again, search engine marketing is all about keywords. So we identify these keywords and then we build a strategy around how to, how to position yourself in the highest possible way in the search engine results you know, surrounding these keywords. So here, um, you know, I kind of want to play this little exercise. Um, I'm sure here, paper straws, there's, I have never met a person who says they're fans of paper straws, so I think there's a big opportunity. <laughs> uh, but so we're going to say here, rice straws. So it's, I, think, I think it's kind of interesting uh, area, vegan, kind of nature, you know, natural uh, products. So I want to do a little exercise and actually go through a whole what we call keyword research process. So when you're thinking about your ideal customer profile, you need to think what are they going to be searching to find you. Once you start identifying these keywords, you can build a strategy around it and you can put some costs around that. You know, keeping your house in order, making sure your expenses are right, that is going to be very important in your marketing. So how can you get this list of keywords that you would want to target? So you can head to Google and you just type in the keyword. Let's say rice straws. So you type in rice straws, Google will actually give you several keyword suggestions already. So what you do is you just type these, jot them down. There's you know different types of uh, options they're giving. So you jot those down and then we're gonna be using this keyword group to analyze actual data around it, how many people are actually searching this a month. And this is where you can start building a case for your uh, targeting uh, for your ideal customer profile. So let's see what is, what is, if we take all these keywords, what kind of data can we get out of it? So you will we'll need to use a tool called Google Ads. So Google AdWords gives, you, gives anyone access, you can use it for free, uh, and you're able to extract interesting data around these keywords. So this is number one actionable insight today. <laughs> How can you get this uh, data around these keywords? And what is this data we're looking for? So I'm circling it here. The data that we're looking for is called monthly searches. It's also known as search volume. So each keyword has a certain type of search volume. So if your ideal customer profile is someone who would buy rice straws or bamboo straws in bulk, then you can start identifying how many people are searching that a month. So we can see that bamboo straws is searched 3,600 times a month. So that's giving us a pretty solid number that, oh, it's my ideal customer profile and I can find them through search engines and there's a search volume every single month happening, which means I can tap into that search volume and drive them to my website. And it's also overall a good way how to research new service ideas, new customer profiles. Just in general, you can play around with this a lot and it's gonna give you some great insights on are people ready to buy your product? Because this is the other segment of, let's say your product is really innovative and people don't really know that your product exists or that they need it, that's when you need to go back to that decision awareness factor and focus your marketing efforts there. Search engine marketing is perfect if people have made that decision that they need your service, so then you can be in front of them and they're gonna be very likely to make a purchase, especially in local businesses as we saw. 70% almost conversion for nearby searches. I mean, that's really high number. So just one more time, I wanna go through the steps, okay? So you go to Google, 
<coughs> you type in your keyword, and then it's going to give you a lot of other suggested keywords. Don't hit enter. It's Google's going to populate these results. Once these results are populated, you go to Google Ads, you go to Get Search Farm and Forecasts, and then you put all these keywords in this little table. You hit Get Started, and it's going to give you all those results. And you can extract this data in an Excel file. You can play around it, build a master sheet. And this is great. Either you're doing just a research for a new product, or you already have your existing profi uh, product that you want to serve. You can get a ton of insights from this. And you can also narrow it down between different locations you're targeting. If you're a local uh, establishment, you probably want to see these search volumes only around your business. It doesn't matter what's happening in Tampa if you are you know, a coffee shop, a restaurant somewhere in Miami. All right, so jumping into the next one, I want to talk about some, uh, something called PPC and SEO. What is PPC? PPC is pay per click. So we're when we're talking about the SERP features itself, Google makes all its money from Google Ads. So that, this is the tool called Google Ads. So in this tool, Google AdWords platform, you can play around with these keywords, and it's going to give you this data. Why is Google so generous with this data? It's because they want you to build advertising campaigns around these keywords. Right here, it actually shows you how much would you pay for one click if you were to run an advertising campaign through Google AdWords. Now, these clicks can vary very drastically. For some of personal injury uh, law firms we have worked with, I've seen clicks as high as $400 just for one click. So you have to be pretty <laughs> careful with these numbers. But again, it gives you good insights on what, is, what does Google think about your keywords, how competitive it is, and how can you target it. So that's ads. But then there's also something called SEO, which stands for Search Engine Optimization. That's where my passion lies, is in uh, building out websites so, they, so Google would rank you highly in organic results. What does that mean? So right after the ads, we saw these different types of organic results. So you could be in a Google Map result pack. That's an organic result. That's if you worked on your search engine optimization, that's where your result would appear. And then results after what's called organic results. That is also part of SEO. So you invest certain things in your website, and then you're able to get, uh, you know, you can improve your rankings in organic uh, search results. I think that's a very creative way, and also can be very cost effective if you understand the fund fundamentals of uh, SEO. So that's, I'm going to focus my remaining slides on how, what are these fundamentals and what we should be focused on to get started and get some uh, you know, initial results going with search engine optimization. So there are three components to search engine optimization. One, technical optimization. And you know, people get a little scared when things come down to technical optimizations. You, know, you probably have your website and now you're kind of wondering, what do I do with that site? Or you know, what are the things I should be focused on? Well, one, technical optimization, there's some very simple ways how you can identify just optimizations for each one of your pages. Key takeaway here is just put your main keyword in your title tag and heading tag, which is title tag is the little tab up there, and heading tag is kind of element on a page. And I can expand on this. You guys can reach out to me afterwards. Um, it's going to be a free advice if someone's actually seriously trying to get into it. The second part is content depth. So that means how much content do you have informing your ideal customers around the service you're offering? More content often equates on higher site authority. So that means you have to write educating content, content answering questions what your ideal customer profile could have, kind of that research phase, targeting some of those type of keywords, or just in general, adding information that's valuable to your ideal customers. Website is your real estate that lives on internet. That's what you need to develop. PPC is kind of like renting, SEO is investing in your own business and building out this knowledge base where your clients can go and get information. It's not just for search and optimization. It's really for your ideal customer. So you need to think about how can I build a strong content plan that's going to assist 
my ideal customer profile. And that's what Google wants to see. Google wants to see a healthy content that is serving those people that are looking for it. And the last one is domain rating. Uh, that's something that associates your domain's authority. So more authority of your website is, the easier it will be ranked for different types of keywords. So how can you build this domain authority is you need to get other websites referencing your website. So in this case, I'm participating in MDCC uh, seminar. Uh, afterwards, um, <laughs> I'm going to ask Matt Gu to link back to my website to increase my website's authority. Uh, and that's an org organic way how you can influence your website rankings and how you can show Google that your website is authoritative. So more authoritative other sources are talking about your website. Your site's rankings will improve and authority will improve. But if you don't have the technical optimization and content depth, the domain rating, uh, if, it's, if it's not strong enough, it, you, know, you could have the strongest domain rating, but those things won't, uh, won't impact it as well. So jumping into the next section, which is, oh, froze. OK, I'm back. Uh, couple free tools I wanted to give you guys to get started. So Google gives you a lot of information that you can play around with to get started with SEO. There's even videos. Like They want you to produce good content, and they want to give you resources so you're able to operate your website effectively. So you head to Google search, uh, google.com search console. So search console, it's a little code you install on your website, and then it's going to start showing you what keywords you're ranking for. It's 100% free. There's also a lot of free videos that you can just watch and get kind of started to understand how can I build my own web equity? How can I build my website and start indexing for some of the keywords that could find my ideal customer profiles? Then second one is for the local businesses. It's an absolute must, and I feel like probably majority of people here have already played around with this, but Google Business Profile. You absolutely got to have Google Business Profile that is, you know, well optimized, put images, get as many reviews as you can. Number one ranking factor for uh, Google Maps is reviews. So if you can get a lot of reviews in your Google business profile, this profile alone will be attracting your ideal customer profiles. Remember, we're talking about nearby searches. Uh, people are making 50% commitment to go to that location they already found. So this is your almost, uh, I want to say, uh, a, a gold mine that you can really leverage for local businesses. So your local business, spend a lot of time around this and continue investing in optimizing that profile. Then, uh, why he keeps doing that? Uh, I wanted to give you guys also a couple free tools uh, to play around with. So free keyword research tool. So first, my example I had uh, showed how you can do keyword research just within the Google search itself. This is a tool that's going to give you uh, keyword ideas. Now, the free version gives you like 10 or 15 keywords that you can look at. Um, it's on hrefs.com keyword generator. But if you're getting a little serious about uh, search engine optimization, I think this is a totally worth your investment uh, to invest in this tool. It gives you a lot of data on your competitors, different markets, etc. It's It's really interesting. Uh, you can get a lot of insights. From, for, from strategic perspectives itself. And uh, primarily, people are also using this tool to analyze the domain authority uh, for those websites that are, uh, you know, you're trying to rank or you can analyze your own website domain authority. And the next one, um, this is actually a tool uh, our agency built and all our clients are using it. It's called TrackRite. And this is to track your uh, lead generation uh, performance. And also it gives you uh, keyword ranking tracking and also call tracking in case you're a local business. Uh, just gives you a good uh, lead attribution system so you can see how many customers came in. Basically, you know, your marketing needs to be tracked properly, uh, just as uh, this meeting when it got kicked off. Um, we're talking about keeping your back of house in order. This is, this is something you need once you get into more active marketing phases, just making sure you're seeing results from you know, your marketing efforts. And then this translates into business, increased investments in marketing, et cetera. Um, and yeah, that sums up uh, my, uh, 
my presentation on uh, fundamentals of uh, search engine marketing. Uh, I hope you guys got some uh, insights. I see there's a couple chat points. I haven't read, th read them yet, but uh, Matthew, I'll let you uh, kind of navigate it uh, further from here. Uh, I don't know if Q&A is now or, or afterwards. Thank, thank you, thank you very much, Chris. It's, it's a wealth of information, and I'm sure um, this is this is this is awesome. This is awesome. Um, you know, um, we're gonna um, have get William back on. Okay. Sure. And if any any of the um, participants have questions, feel free to put that in the chat um, so we can um, post the questions and go to William and to Chris. Mm, I see a, I see a question. Maybe a question from Helena. Um, I see it. Uh, I'll, I'll address it. So SEMrush is very similar to Ahrefs. So uh, I would say it's equally equal investment either in SEMrush or Ahrefs. They're big competitors. So SEMrush is a great tool. Spyful, uh, that one might be a little more targeted to pay-per-click. Um, so I haven't spent too much time using that one. Uh, but SEMrush is definitely a good tool, equivalent to Ahrefs. So whichever you prefer from kind of user experience perspectives, um, you know, either or are great. Uh, definitely worth the investment. But, you know, you're investing in it, then definitely you should be also working on uh, some, uh, you know, search engine marketing projects. They're not cheap. It's like $100 a month. <laughs> okay, William, um, the floor is yours. Perfect. Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can okay. hear you. I'd like to apologize. I had to reboot my machine. It wasn't acting correct this morning. Okay, I, my name is William Lucky. I'm co-founder of Dynamic Strategic Marketing, which is a marketing research data analytics and marketing strategy firm. And my job this morning is to tell you about uh, how to find your ideal customer. I heard Chris uh, talk about uh, an ideal customer profile. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper and tell you you should build a buyer persona around that. And I'm going to give you the tools necessary to actually or whether you're a small business or a large business to figure out exactly who that is by you know following a few steps so sorry about this. all right who is your ideal client that's somebody who uh, has a problem that you can solve your product should be the solution for their problem they have the means to buy your product uh, they're engaged with the, either the product category or with you already. And most of all, they share your brand values. Now, when we finish this, we'll have an ideal customer profile. And these are kind of the things you want to give your advertising agency or uh, other people doing some promotion for you because it kind of it gives them a blueprint of exactly who you're trying to, to reach at that point. Now, how do we go about doing that? You're gonna have to take up some, ge uh, some demographics, gonna need to know things about your customer. Now, everyone always asks me, is this a difficult thing to do? 
well, you can hire firms to do this, but some of this you can do on your own. If you're an existing business, then you kind of have an idea of who's walking through the door. So you can start to say, am I seeing more uh, female customers? Am I seeing more male customers? All right, that's one thing. You can also start to kind of get a gauge of their age. You know, who am I talking with? Am I talking to some teenagers or am I talking to uh, people in their 50s and 60s? Second thing you want to do is get a firm understanding of where your consumer is or where they are. Is it local, regional, national, or international? Now, if you have and I, if you have something like a uh, an app, you can probably be international. All they need to do is be able to download it. But if you're the local barber shop, you know you're you're not going to China to give a haircut. So you're pretty much be looking at some local people. Psychographics, and I've highlighted this one. This becomes one of the key areas when you want to start marketing to your customer because you need to make a connection with them. They need to connect with your product. They need to connect with, with your business so that when they do have this problem or they do have a problem that you can possibly solve, they're going to be thinking of you. So you want to be looking at things like their beliefs, values, lifestyles, opinions, and activities. Now, where do these come from? Sometimes you can get you can pick this stuff up uh, online. There's lots of uh, free services that you can use. There are plenty of websites that track people because once you know who your demographics are and once you know kind of the age range, there are lots of sites that track people in those those areas, and they will kind of give you some insight as okay, teenagers are into A, B, C, and D, so you'll kind of have an idea of what their lifestyle is. Behavioral, I've also highlighted. This is usage rate. How much of the product do people tend to use? How often do they buy? When do they buy? When they buy, do they buy in bulk? Uh, do they buy one unit at a time? Do they purchase my service for a whole year or are they on the monthly scale? So you kind of want to know what these habits are as well. Once you've done that, once you've broken your market up using segmentation into those, oops, into those areas, you'll get one or two segments that look good to you. Okay, you can't chase everybody. No company has enough money to chase everybody and no business starting out wants to chase everybody. You want to build up a reputation among a specific group of customers that you think you can handle and you think you can service them well. Okay, so, once I've broken up my market using my demographic, psychographic, behavioral, and geographical location, I figured all that out. Now I have to pick one. Okay, when you decide to pick one, there are some criteria that you might want to give or you might want to bring to bear. One is, is this, how big is the segment? How many people are in here? Now, for this type of information, you can use a lot of uh, government statistics like the Census Bureau. You can start, it'll... Uh, it'll go all the way down to your local county. You can start to figure out how many people are possibly in a particular market. Is that market growing? Is it stable or is it shrinking? And you want to either chase markets that are growing or you want to chase markets that are fairly stable, but you never want to put your money into a shrinking market because in the future, that's kind of going to say you don't have any, you won't have any sales. Profitability will go down. You also want to know does your the, the people in that segment have the uh, ability to purchase? You know, you can advertise to children, but a lot of times the purchaser is going to be the parent. Right? Chuck E. Cheese advertises to children, but pretty much know that the parent is going to be the one giving the uh, kicking out the funds. Uh, if you're a business selling to other businesses. You might need to understand who's in the buying center, who's actually in control of the purchase, because you could talk to a technical agent for a week. And then when you sit down and say, well, let's close the deal, they say, no, no, I got to go over here and talk to, you know, this other group of people. Is the segment uh, accessible? Can I get to these people using, um, what method can I use to get to these people, to talk to them, to chit chat with them? Uh, do I have capacity? I know if I open up my doors and a thousand people walk in, I only have 50 units. 
this is not going to go over well. I mean, it's a good problem to have, don't get me wrong, but it, it'll have, a, it, it causes a problem. Last thing, is the segment actionable, All right? Will they be responsive to the message I'm giving? Will they find my, uh, my appeal or my product appealing? These are some things you have to figure out. Now, if you're an existing business, you kind of know whether or not people are finding your product or your service is adequate. If you're an existing, if you're a new business coming online, this is kind of hit and miss sometimes until you kind of figure out how to talk to the people. And remember, you have to talk to people in the language they understand. Once we finish this, what we have built will be a ideal customer profile. And I heard Chris speaking of it earlier. These are the things that they need to be able to help you maximize your SEO. They have to know where to put the information, who you're specifically targeting, where you're going after. And to do that, you need to build out some information. Now, psychographic information is difficult to get at times, but this whole process is a back and forth. You get a little bit, some other things come up, you add it to it. So let's get into consumer uh, customer profile. From the customer profile, you want to build out something called the buyer persona. So segmentation breaks up the market. Targeting helps you figure out which one of those segments you want to go at. Then once you figure out that segment, you want to take a hard look at it. Inside that segment will be some small, smaller groups. Think about going to a college campus and you go into a lecture hall and there's 200 students. Okay, most of them are about the same age, currently in the same location, uh, studying the same major. So there's a lot of stuff about, about them that is similar. However, once you start talking to them, you'll find out, well, this group over here likes, uh, is into animal rights issues. This group over here is all about environmentalists. This group over here is, uh, these, these are like bookworms, they don't wanna do anything. So even inside your target market, you're going to have different subgroups of buyers. You want to build out a profile for each of those subgroups. How do you build out that profile? Now the profile can change based on the type of product that you're, serve, uh, that you're selling or the type of service that you're delivering. But in general, it's about 10 things that go on your uh, buyer uh, persona. The name is the last thing you give it. The name is, is, is the key to tell you which of those personas you're looking at. You're going to build out that persona based on what you did at your segmentation level, the information that you, you, you collected. So you'll see age, income, occupation, and location. Those can easily be gotten through some demographics. Interest and hobbies, goals, objectives, values, these are parts of your psychographic, the things that you start asking your customers. Now, to get some of that psychographic, small surveys. You know, you can just ask people a few questions about themselves. Uh, don't be too probing in the beginning because you have to build up some trust before they give you all of that information. Now, Oh, what happened to you? Sorry about that. What does a buyer persona look like? All right, buyer persona kind of looks like this. It'll give you a, uh, what is going on here? Buyer persona kind of looks like this. It'll give you some information on there about exactly what you need. And it's a one page document. Now, notice here when it's down to hobbies, hiking, traveling, these are things they want to do. You have fears, values, relationship status. All of this is necessary to figure out exactly who I'm going to be targeting. When you finish, it should look something like this. This is a buyer persona. This is something I would have now. I'm going to tell you, I have a product for sale. It is a water bottle. It's durable. It has uh, a built-in water filter. 
and it is spill proof. I want to sell that product to a customer. This is my buyer persona for an outdoor activist. After I've gone and done all my research, well, how will I do that? To communicate with the customer, and that's the third step, is in your positioning. Communication has two fundamental issues, two fundamental things. One, it conveys general information. But two, it allows you to position your product and link your product to things your customer needs or things your customer wants. Gives you an opportunity to tell your customer, hey, I have a solution to your problem. So how does this all work out when it comes to advertising? Here is my Hydro Max. Now, if I go back to my buyer profile, you see it's environmentalists. They like hiking and traveling. Uh, they have money issues. They worry about, like any 22-year-old will have, they worry about paying their bills and they have money issues. Well, I'm going to take that and link my product to them. How do I do that? Well, I have my product here, Hydro Max. I'm going to tell them, because they're environmentalists, that it's made from recycled Okay, that it's made from recycled plastic. It has a built-in water purifier. Okay, something. You know, are we there? Yes, we are still on. Okay, I'm Perfect. sorry. My thing with my my screen blacked out. There. It is durable, spill proof. Now. I can link my product, even though this is a generic product, I'm going to link my product to my consumer right here. They own, oh, sorry, based on hiking, camping, and traveling. Because if I look at the persona, these are things that they like to do. So using my, my, my persona, I can figure out how to communicate with them to make my product relevant to them. Obviously, hate pollution, love the planet. That's again going at the art environmentalist in there. The budget side, great for those on a budget. This goes to the money issue. So taking my generic product, knowing who my customer is, what they look like, it enables me to communicate with them and tell them here, here are some things, here are some, uh, here's a product that, that meets a lot of criteria that you already have. And that's generally how you go about creating a buyer persona. Start with segmentation, take a look at each segment, go through the analysis to see if it's, it's going to be a, 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 a good segment for you to chase. Do you have the capital to chase it? Once you do that, put your segment together, create your, your persona, look at the information you have, figure out if there are some subgroups, because remember, the, 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 the more narrow I can make it, the better off it is for me in terms of marketing to them. Now, I'll be glad to take any questions on how we do this. Oh, some of the ways that you can get this information. There's a lot of online information, secondary information that you can pick up. Census Bureau has a ton of information on these. Uh, you can go to places like Spotify. Uh, there's a few places on the net that, that you can look at that will give you information on specific target markets. You know, you got to take it with a grain of salt a little bit because sometimes their, their sample size is not, not that great. But it does give you some idea. You know, you want to be able to drive down the street with at least one eye open when you're trying to communicate with the customer. Yeah, I think you blocked out my screen. Okay, and that concludes this presentation on things. I'll reiterate it again, segmentation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you have to go through the nuts and bolts. People always ask me, do I have to go through that? Well, no, but it sure is going to make your job a lot easier if you do, especially when you're trying to approach somebody like Chris and say, here, this is the people I would like to chase. If you can step to them and they already know, it makes their job a whole lot easier. You're perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, um, William. Um, if 
anybody has any questions, feel free to put it in the chat and um, either to William or to Chris. If, if we don't have any questions, um, wanted to thank each one and ev everyone, and in particular, our speakers, William and Chris, um, to, in participating to, in today's um, technical assistance workshop. Um, the chamber, um, you can reach out to us if you are interested in getting technical assistance. I will put um, the link in the chat. Um, as well as I wanted to make sure to also mention about we have two upcoming um, workshops on, on um, government contracting on September the 13th, as well as a second part on October the 11th. We um, at the chamber as well are hosting our um, annual um, ball on also our golf on the Dorothy, Dorothy Baker Golf Classic, the 31st annual Dorothy Baker um, Golf Classic on October the 14th. And, and also um, every Tuesday, the chamber has a small business meetup um, over Zoom. And um, again, thank you all for um, participating. And we will see you in the next um, workshop.